Ahoy my people, hope everyone's having a good summer. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about Lil' Kim's physical transformation and the self-esteem issues that some black women of a darker skin tone suffer from to this day. It's a more serious topic and I hope I don't offend anyone in the making of this video but it's all coming from a good place because I love my black women and this is just bringing awareness to the issue. So without any further ado, let's get it, get it, get it. Little Kim the Queen B, so you best take heed. Shall I proceed? Yes, Lil' Kim, real name Kimberly Jones, is a rapper hailing from Brooklyn, specifically the Bedford-Stuyvesant area. Her father was a former US Marine who led a very strict household. When she was nine, Lil' Kim's parents separated and her mother moved to New Rochelle, New York with Kim, which is a predominantly white area. While she was there, Kim would struggle to make friends and she was often teased for being a dark-skinned girl. She was made to feel ugly and she would often take it to heart. She couldn't take the bullying so she begged her mom to take her back to Brooklyn, which she did. This led to Kim being raised by her father. Her dad was verbally and sometimes physically abusive towards her. The two would bump heads frequently which later led to her father kicking her out of the house. Following this, Kim dropped out of high school and began couch surfing at friends' houses. She always felt rejected by her dad which would often criticise her hair or her clothing. Unfortunately, this would be the kind of men that she would attract from then on. In an interview with Newsweek, Kim said, quote, All my life, men have told me I wasn't pretty enough, even the men I was dating, end quote. This obviously led to her developing an inferiority complex in relation to her skin tone, like many other black women out there. She felt like all the men in the neighborhood were also attracted to women of a lighter skin. One day, while she worked at a department store, she bumped into Biggie on her way back from work. Big was hanging out on the block and at this time Biggie was relatively known for being one of the best crack sellers in the neighbourhood and also for his rhyming skills. After the two began seeing each other for a while on the low, she would spit for him and an impressed Biggie would later bring her along when he later got signed to Bad Boy Records in 1993. In July of 1994, Biggie would meet Faith Evans at a Bad Boy photo shoot and they started dating for a few weeks just before getting married in August of that year. Lil' Kim was understandably furious cause Biggie done a dirty man. Like she's been there for him before he was famous and here comes this little light skin chick and he just marries her within a few weeks of knowing her. What? That's nuts. Even after that Lil' Kim remained his faithful mistress and the two continued to sleep with each other behind Faith's back. Big and Kim would still get into arguments though and big fights over Biggie's marriage and one time she almost passed out after Biggie almost choked her to death in a lift. Oof. This is the first time I've ever heard you admit that you were the mistress. Yeah, I mean, he was married. That's no secret. And right. I'm not that's not something I'm proud of. I was a I was a baby. We got kicked out of the hit factory because we <laughs> we was fighting so bad. He brought some all stinky groupies up in there and we and him was together. Uh -huh. And so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get him. Oh, I'm gonna get him. So, you know, I had a little shorty come up and come pick me up in the E class. Oh God. And he Kim. tried to, I mean, I was behind the booth literally rapping in my lion just. I, I got the, I got my headphones on like this. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, you know that. <laughs> Boom, my headphones on like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. And I was crying. I was so oh, scared. God, Kim, I didn't hilarious. know what happened. And he like, you try to play me? You try to play me? I'm like, but you trying to play me? You got all these skanks in here. Wow. And we started fighting and we tore the plaques off the wall and everything. And he choked me out in the elevator, so I passed out. And look, <laughs> and then look. <laughs> and you were still loving this man after all of this. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I tell you, sometimes if he wasn't dead, I can't remember. But I'm not, I love him. That's my baby. Another incident occurred when Lil Kim was to record a verse for Usher's song, "Just Like Me." in which Kim came at the studio pissed off because he just found out that Biggie had slept with his sister. Fam. 
So she wasn't in the mood, obviously she just wasn't in the mood to record. But Biggie wrote the lyrics for her and Jermaine Dupri was also present. And after a verbal back and forth between Biggie and Kim, Biggie would pull out a gun on her and force her to record the verse. Oh my lord. So that studio session was um, the song called Just Like Me with Usher, mm. right? So what he did was he wrote the rap for Lil' Kim. And Lil' Kim, at this particular point in time, this was the time when Big, I'm thinking he f***ed Kim's sister, right? Okay, oh. This was, this was, <laughs> this, is, this is in the music though. Okay, yeah. in the music, okay. This is in the music. <laughs> and she found out about it. Mm. So she was upset when she came to the studio about this. And, and, and he, and, and she, he couldn't really get her to do the rap. Uh -huh. And me and Usher was just, you know, we was there young, watching what's going on, and right. Big pulled the strap out on her. Oh. On Kim? Yes. And to lay the verse? Or just? <laughs> just let her know he just was <laughs> kill her. Oh my God. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, I was about to say, he's, he was a serious CEO. Like, you gonna get this verse. No, 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 that was part of it. Oh, okay, no, no, okay. Real, real, like, yeah. real sh like. Yeah, that's a sign of Big, you gotta watch she yourself. Was, yeah. she, she was upset. Wow. And really couldn't do the was verse. Was she wilding out though? Huh? Like was she wilding out? Yeah, like she came, but she didn't really want to come because she was upset. Right. And he mm. was like, yo, we got JD and Usher here. You can't be acting like, you know, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? What's going on right now? Biggie was a savage, man. And I don't even mean that in a good way. Like he was hella abusive, but people don't talk about this enough because they want to protect his legacy. But he wasn't no angel. But this is not to take anything away from Biggie or tarnish his legacy because he's a legend, like East Coast legend. He's actually one of my favorite rappers, but you know, just gotta keep it real sometimes, isn't it? I don't understand why any woman would want to stay with someone that treats them that way, you know, but my guess is she felt like she owed Biggie her life because he took her out of the streets and basically shaped her career. After a few concerts and tours, the money would start rolling in and Kim would begin altering her appearance. She began wearing blue eye contacts and blonde wigs, later on even getting work done on her nose. At some point in 1996, Lil Kim even terminated the pregnancy when she discovered she was pregnant by Big. She told the source, quote, I already knew the kind of relationship me and Biggie had and I knew that having a child was something that couldn't take place, end quote. Sometime after that, Faith would eventually find out about Biggie and Kim's relationship and the various other women that Biggie was cheating with, and eventually they separated. The tension between Biggie and Faith was at an all-time high. At around this time, Biggie would meet Charlie Baltimore and publicly made her his new girlfriend, while Kim was still the hidden mistress. Do you guys see a pattern here? Like, he married the light skin, publicly dated another light skin, but secretly slept with the dark skin. It was all about image at the end of the day. I feel like Kim was probably the right choice for Biggie, but at around that time, a light skinned woman probably looked better in his arm. Another crazy thing was that Biggie asked Faith to play the role of his significant other in the video of Get Money, which depicts Biggie and his girlfriend or wife having an argument and him kicking her out of their mansion. Because of the beef at the time, Faith obviously declined and told him to go F himself. <laughs> so he got Charlie Baltimore to play as Faith Evans instead, while Kim obviously did her part in the video as she was featured on the song. Fam, this guy had his girlfriend and his mistress in the same video while the girlfriend portrayed his wife. <laughs> this whole thing was messy. This was love and hip hop before love and hip hop even existed, real talk. But let me not even go off topic and talk about Charlie Baltimore's relationship with Biggie or the rumours that Tupac slept with Biggie's wife and all of that other stuff. Like, that's a whole other thing in itself. But anyway, in 1997, Biggie would eventually pass away after being gunned down in LA, leaving a party for Vibe magazine. At the funeral, Lil' Kim was destroyed. I mean, she was crying and shouting like crazy. Mary J. Blige was holding her, consoling her the entire time. And according to sources, while Faith Evans was singing at the funeral, Lil' Kim was crying and rolling around the floor, just causing a scene. <laughs> and Faith was just standing there looking like, really, like someone come and get this chick off the floor. <laughs> But no, that whole day seemed to be really sad. His closest friend Lil C's was finished and you could see it in his face man. 
Members from the group 112 were also crying uncontrollably. Jay-Z and Dane Dash, Diddy, Busta Rhymes, Queen Latifah, and more were also present. After Biggie's death, Kim continued to attract the same usual violent men that would beat on her. A few years after Biggie's death, she started seeing drug dealer Damien Weld Hardy, who was also abusive towards her, breaking her nose and giving her black eyes, thus forcing Kim to undergo several nose jobs. Fun fact, Damien is the guy that killed Darrell Homo Baum, who is the guy that famously shot 50 Cent nine times. Damien killed Homo in an unrelated drug deal gone wrong and is currently serving a life sentence. Years after Biggie's death, Lil' Kim continues to honour his legacy. She still talks about him in interviews and makes tribute songs. This year, she even attended and performed at Biggie's 50th birthday dinner gala. Her and Faith Evans remain close to Biggie's mum and have since squashed their beef. However, Kim still hasn't squashed the beef with her skin tone. Today, she has done extensive plastic surgery on her whole body and looks about 10 shades lighter than her original skin tone. It's truly sad because she was actually a beautiful woman and I wish she saw what we all saw in her. Kim herself talked about how she felt about her appearance when she was growing up. Quote, To this day, when someone says I'm cute, I can't see it. I don't see it no matter what anybody says. End quote. Damn, man. And just look at what she, just look at how she looks today. Like ugh, the drastic change. Kim told Newsweek that all her exes cheated on her with women that typically had European features, saying, "Quote, being a regular black girl wasn't enough." End quote. This is why it's important to love yourselves. All my black kings and queens need to know that your melanin is what makes you unique in this world. Skin bleaching is a problem that pe many people in the black community has been dealing with for a long time and we all know many people, celebrities or not, that did it. In Lil Kim's case, she changed everything down to the shape of her nose and cheekbones, which is just crazy. The worst was when she even criticised Notori Norton's portrayal of her in the movie Notorious, claiming that the actress looked nothing like her and that Christina Milian would have been a better candidate. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Christina looks nothing like her. The light skin obsession is that deep. Sorry, I love Kim, but this is just ridiculous, isn't it? I think Naturi killed her role as no Kim. You went in. Anyway, whether we want to admit it or not, deep down, some black people have an obsession with having European features to this day. That's why we go crazy whenever we see a black person with green eyes and blue eyes because it's unusual and it's something that white people tend to have. Also look at celebrities like Keisha Cole, Lil' Kim, Tony Braxton, Janet Jackson, Halle Berry and Naomi Campbell. Compare their noses 10 years ago and now. I'll wait. What's even worse is that we as a society in general didn't start appreciating our African features such as big lips and big butts until a white woman, <coughs> Kim Kardashian and her family, popularised the look. A look that black women naturally had all along. Our women been lit all along, we just needed a cult of vulture to show us, which is sad and I hope that Lil' Kim and some, keyword some, other black women will learn to love themselves. Love yourselves, love yourselves, say it with me, love yourselves. Come on man, respect yourself. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's your boy Dre Signs, over and out. Bye.